So today we're in sunny Hillcrest, middle of winter, or start of spring nearly, checking out this little tub. Evidently, the heater is not working. Uh, the heater and circulation pump is not working and the buttons are not working. So let's go and check out the equipment area and see what we can find. Right, so the first thing we see when we look into this open DB box is water. Not a good sign. Anyway, supposedly the heat is not working, the circulation pump's not working, um, the buttons aren't working. So let's just check out here. We do have a timer on it. So we will make sure that that timer is set to on, otherwise nothing will work. So now we put all the circuit breakers on and we come around here and have a look and see what happens when we turn the thermostat on. Okay, the contact is coming on, but the pump is not working. Right, we'll just let me check what that story is, then I'll come back to you. Right, so I found a loose wire, this wire that connects onto the contact or relay. And I've connected that, it is the pump wire. Let me turn the thermostat and see what happens now. Well, it would help if we turn the breakers on. That one, that one, that one. And the last two. Let's see what happens. There we go. Evidently the pump is working. So, let's see what happens after this. Right, now to check whether the heating is actually working or not, I've disconnected the circulation pump. Circuit breakers are on. There we go. It's energized. So we run that for around about 10 seconds or so to see if it heats up at all. And then what we're going to do, turn it off. We're going to go and check that pipe down there. The thick pipe, that's where the heater element is situated. All right, so the heater element is not working. So that's a problem we're going to have to sort out for them. Uh, let me get on to putting this pump back connected back on there and then we'll start checking the pipes. So next what we're going to do is check whether the bellow buttons are working or not. I've been up to the top side at the tub up there. I've tested all three of them. The one with for the blower is working but the other two aren't. So now we need to investigate why that is. I'll just start checking this pipe out here and let's see what we can find here. There you go. There, the rats, the rats have eaten it. So obviously that pipe's not going to work because it's got a hole in it. Right, so after testing the air switches down here, we find that one of the air switches is in fact not working. And the one, the pump was connected to the one that was not working. The light was connected to the one next to it in the middle that was working. So all I had to do was swap the two wires around and now when you press the bellows in on the top of the jacuzzi uh, the pump comes on and the blower comes on, which is the way it should be. So the synopsis of this job is that there's some water in the control box. Not a major deal, we'll just get that cleaned out and dried out. The pump is working, the jet pump is also working and I've got the bellow buttons on the top of the tub to work. Uh, we're going to disconnect the timer probably because that's of no use here and everything should be good to go after we replace the geyser element. Right, so I've taken the heater housing out and popped the end off and there we go. There's the problem, not working. It's leaking obviously, been leaking for a long time this. Okay, so now I've removed the wires from the element. We need to get it out of the casing so we can replace it. Really simple, use an element removal tool. I've got a pair of pliers, I stick them on there like that, twist it and out we go. Right, we're going to replace the damaged heater element with a hard water element, 3 kilowatts. You can see it's slightly different to a normal one. A normal geyser element is chrome over here and this is, will be nice and shiny chrome as well. This has got a matte finish and this end here is brass. That's how we tell the difference between a hard water and a normal soft water element. What I've done is I've put some silicone between this washer here and the brass and also on this other side here onto the thread. Then on the inside of the heater casing thread I've put some silicone as well. We're just going to screw that in together, connect it up, put it back into place and then test it. 
Right, so I've fitted the new element into the housing. The housing has been put back into place down there. Uh, the pump is still disconnected here because we want to test it now that you see that it's working after we've done our work. So now I'm going to come around here, turn the thermostat on, energized, leave it for a few seconds, switch it off, and then I'll lean down and feel it. If it's warm, it's working. If it's cold, obviously it's not working. Okay, so I leant over, felt it, it's nice and warm already after about seven or eight seconds. I'm going to turn the mains off here again, turn all these breakers off because I want to put the pump back into here. We just connect this back like so, screw it in, and we'll be able to test it with the element working. Okay, so these two pumps here, when you turn them on, there's a bit of a delay before they start to spin. And that can be due to a faulty or breaking down capacitor. So while I'm here, they're not expensive. I'm just going to stick a new one in there and then a new one in this one here. Um, easy to do, just take the old one out and stick the new one and clip it into place and that's it.